The answer to this question is actually going to depend on two different factors here. Well, three. One is the camera sensor that you have in your camera. There's only really two in the last 10 years. And then the other one is going to be the light pollution factor that's going on. And then finally, of course, there's the object that you're trying to photograph. What you're trying to photograph is going to influence what ISO you really want to use. All right, now essentially, there are two different sensors that Olympus has used for really the last 10 years. There is a Panasonic sensor, which is actually the same sensor that's found in the ZWO 1600, both the MM and the color version. I have the mono version. And that sensor has a very gradual noise slope, okay? Now, the sensor that's used, the 20 megapixel sensor, which is pretty much in all of their current cameras, at least as of the making of this video, it's a 20 megapixel IMX270 sensor. And it has a dual gain circuitry system, which means that there is actually a point where the noise in this guy drops quite a bit. And dynamic range also drops a little bit too, but not too much. Now I'm gonna show you some graphs here and we'll kind of make sense of this. So one of the first things to understand about ISO or gain for that matter, when you're choosing it to do your astrophotography is that ISO or gain is going to change one of two metrics, okay? As ISO goes up, believe it or not, read noise goes down, okay? Which I know is kind of counterintuitive to what the entire marketing photography industry may have told you in the past, but that's actually the fact the way it is. And keep in mind, we're talking astrophotography here, where we're taking multiple pictures, we're stacking them together, so we have a much more scientific understanding about this. But yeah, ISO, as it goes up, generally, read noise goes down. Now, read noise is a very small component in noise, however, but it's still an important one. The other thing to remember is that as ISO goes up, dynamic range goes down. And this is where most people in daytime photography see noise going up. And it's because, well, what they're really seeing is a decrease in the dynamic range of the image. Now, for astrophotography, dynamic range is important if you have a high contrast target. Yes, most astrophotography targets are high contrast relative to daytime images, but you know, there's still, there's some out there that are extremely high contrast. Some really good examples would be the Pleiades, Orion, and yes, even the Andromeda Galaxy would all be considered very high contrast targets. That's because they have central portions that are extremely bright and they have outer regions that are very faint. How faint? Well, they have a difference of almost 20 stops in dynamic range from the outside to the inside of those objects. So yeah, extreme dynamic range here is what we're talking about. Now, in astrophotography though, that's why stacking multiple images is absolutely essential. There's just no way to get around it. You can't take a single exposure and ever expect to get what you see in magazines, okay? So you've got to be doing stacking in order to get good astrophotos. And with that in mind, I'll, I'll give you my formula for success with the 20 megapixel sensors. For the 20 megapixel sensors, I started using ISO 2000, okay? And because that's because at ISO 2000, that's when the second gain circuit in these camera kicks in and noise actually, and the read noise drops drastically, okay? It goes from, let's see here. At ISO 1600, it's 2.3 electrons per photon of read noise. Whereas when we go to ISO 2000, you know, just a small jump up in ISO, the read noise drops drastically. It, re it, it drops down to 1.7 electrons. So it's a significant drop. And it does continue to go down and it kind of floors out at about ISO 5000, which is where it hits one and a half electrons, okay? Now, unfortunately, that means that there's very low dynamic range at that high ISO point, but you know, that's something you're gonna just need to consider if you're shooting a high contrast target or a low contrast target. Now, the other ISO that I'm starting to use a lot is basically ISO 400. ISO 400, it's a, about a three and a half electron read noise, okay? Which isn't too bad, actually. Now, that also still gives me lots and lots of dynamic range. Now, when do I use each, okay? I use the 2000 ISO when I'm out at the farm and I have very little light pollution, okay? And I'm shooting a low contrast target. 
if I'm here in the city, okay, I'm always shooting ISO 400. Even though my read noise is higher, I shoot ISO 400 here in the city and that's because the background of the sky is so much brighter and so I need more dynamic range in order to be able to separate my object from the background sky glow, okay? So, for me, it's always been ISO 2000 if I'm out at the farm and ISO 400 or maybe even lower if it's a really high contrast target here in the city. So. Hopefully that helps you out with those sensors. Now, if you have an older 16 megapixel sensors, there's actually two different generations. I'm just gonna talk about the E1 Mark I because that's the Panasonic sensor. It has a pretty gradual sloping curve. I mean, basically, its read noise gets the lowest when you get to ISO 5000, but typically I've used ISO 1600 or I've used ISO 200, depending on you know, if I'm here in the city using, and I'm dealing with light pollution, I use ISO 200. If I'm out in the country, well then I switch to ISO 1600 and that gives me nice low read noise. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, what's the, what's the dynamic range difference? You know, both of these sensors, it's a nice straight slope. And yeah, like it's the highest dynamic range for both of these cameras is actually gonna be at ISO 200. Okay, for both the 16 and the 20 megapixels sensors. And then once you get to ISO, let's see here, ISO 2000, for the 20 megapixel sensor, it's about six and three quarter stops of dynamic range. Whereas this guy here, it's about six and a quarter stops. So there's about a half stop difference between the two in their dynamic range, both at ISO 2000. And if you bump back the, this guy right here, he gets up to about a stop and a half of dynamic range at ISO 1600, which is, is still very respectable actually for that high of an ISO. And yeah, that's kind of how I do it. So hope you enjoy and get out there and take some pictures. And if you like my channel and you like my images and stuff, you know, please subscribe. And, and here's one more thing. So I post my pictures to an Instagram account called Grimstod, G-R-I-M-S-T-O-D. Okay. And that's where you'll see all my pictures coming up and, you know, keep progress with, you know, as I learn this hobby and get better at it.